I've been asked to talk a little bit about this song, American Girl. Um, out of all our songs, if I had to pick one, this is probably my favorite song that uh, we ever did. And I remember when Tom brought the song in on the first record, <clears throat> we were all really excited. We knew there was something special about that song. And we actually cut it on the 4th of July, if you can imagine that, back in 19, uh, whenever it was. 76 maybe uh, and uh, there's, I was going to explain a few of the elements in the recording of that record that I think make it unique uh, for one thing at the beginning of course Tom had the chords that was basically his part with a bow diddly undercurrent to it uh, and then when we, we cut the track and we had this keyboard in the studio, uh, we would call the studio the Brown Room, it was in an uh, office building next to Shelter Records. And we had Noah Shark, our co-producer and engineer, and Max. And they had a keyboard in there, I think it was a Yamaha, and it had this thing where you hit the low note and it would just gradually go up an octave. And we used that at the beginning of the song, if you listen closely you can hear after we start it. You hear this, and that kind of kicks the song off. And on the guitar, I noticed at the time, uh, uh, we didn't have a 12 string. And we, I wanted it to sound like it had a 12 string on it. And the thing with the 12 string is you usually get octaves. <clears throat> so on the six string, I found a way on the D to get those octaves. If you hit them together, it kind of sounds a little bit like a 12 string. So as Tom was going, I started going, um, I just did that all the way through the chords. And it was really exciting sounding. And then to make that sound more exciting, we overdubbed, I think, a, uh, you gotta keep in mind, I think we only had eight, maybe 16 analog tracks at the time. So we really had to condense all the bits that we put on there. So, um, and the other thing I did that guitar players may find interesting is to make it sound more in tune. When I played uh, against Tom, I left the third note of the chord out. So as the chords went up, I just played first and fifth. So it sounded like this. trumpets in a way. So that helped uh, the harmonics of the song sound a little more in tune. Uh, so against that, as the chords changed, I put in a few licks like uh, out of the chord. Now on this B minor, I put a lick in. Uh. And then back to the drone. And then we had a little bridge part. Uh. And uh, at the end, <clears throat> I did two things. The first time around, <clears throat> excuse me, on the end, I just played two notes. Over the chords. Which creates suspension. And then there was the fiddly bit at the end that I just came off the top of my head. And I didn't like it much, but everybody thought it was really good. And that's to it, that does a little finger picking. And that's the part that goes, uh, so it's using a 
pick in my finger. So um, that was the fiddly bit. Now one little, little trick in there that some guys don't catch is when it goes up to the G, some people go... So you're going... Uh, note which is symmetrical is really not in the chords so I change it to this note so it's so I went um uh, okay. at the very end we had this uh song American Girl and it's got one of my favorite lyrics uh, God it's so painful when something so close is still so far out of reach and that line was so Tom and uh, that song um, we played it you know every gig for 40 years and every night it would still get me excited as soon as I hear that clang 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 there's just something about the exuberance and the joy uh, in that song and another thing that made this song really great was this singer, Phil Seymour, who was with the Dwight Twilley Band. And at the end, well, he did uh, Make It Last All Night. That was Phil Seymour's high voice. At the very end, while we're going out on the chorus, ah, we wanted that vocal to go on forever. And there was no Pro Tools at the time. So Tom and, and uh, Phil Seymour went out, and Tom would start... Ah, and then when he ran out of breath, Phil would come with ah. When he ran out of breath, ran out of breath, Tom would come in under it ah. So you get a seamless ah. We call it the laser vocal on the very end, and that really created a lot of attention and excitement in the song. So uh, that's for all you people that have been asking about that song. There's a little demonstration of uh, how the guitar parts are put together, and of course Ron played an amazing bass, and Stan, Ben. Uh, it was a real, the first song that I think the Heartbreakers really sounded like what we were going to be, you know, our sound on that song. So, thank you for listening, and I hope you like that song half as much as I do. And uh, until next time, stay safe. Take care. <laughs>